Hey guys, Lee with LG Speed and Custom here, and in this video, Jim and I are installing a T5 five-speed in John Broman's 41 Ford pickup. So this is John Broman's 41 Ford pickup. According to this magazine article from Super Ford in 1982, it says in here that this truck was painted in 1964 and the pinstriping that's on it was from 1982. Under the hood, it's got a 24 stud flathead Ford with some Offenhauser heads and an aftermarket intake. Other than that, it is pretty much just a little mild custom pickup. It used to have, I shouldn't say it used to, it still does have this super cool tonneau cover and spare tire cover that matches the bench seat. John still has all that stuff. The steering column has got some really cool 60s custom touches. It's got a bunch of chrome accessories, these cool little windshield excursions. So Jim and I are going to be installing a S10 T5 five-speed in this. We're going to be replacing the three-speed top loader. And along with that, we have to convert the banjo rear end to open drive. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Let's get into it. Well, Jim, I think one of the first things that we need to do is we'll put the truck up on the air on jack stands and we'll start pulling the, maybe take this bench seat out. We'll take the carpet out. There should be a big open tow board in there so that we can get access to the transmission from the top and the drive shaft from the bottom. So underneath we've got a torque tube system, meaning that this tube is fixed permanently to the rear end, and there is a drive shaft inside of here. It does not have a U-joint there. The drive shaft comes up inside of here, and then up here, it goes into the rear end, or the transmission right there. There is a U-joint there. So we're going to undo this little clamshell right here, then drop the rear end and slide it back. Once it's not in here anymore, we can take this tube off and then remove the drive shaft from there. We've got a open drive conversion kit coming that will put just a regular yoke on there. And then we've also got another kit coming for the wishbones because the wishbones mount to the torque tube and it's not gonna be there anymore. So we gotta mount the wishbones to something. Uh, as well, once we get that out, we're probably gonna have to take most of this cross member out, which it needs to come out anyways, because it's really rotten. Then the transmission comes out, then we put the T5 on, figure out new mounts, and then build a drive shaft. Easy, right? Sounds easy. Couple hours, couple cups of coffee. Up top here, we've got this removable floor piece that will give us access to the transmission and the bell housing. So I'm gonna start pulling that off. And then I think, I know on my 47, the transmission came out this way rather than down below. So I'm gonna work at that while Jim's doing the bottom stuff. So Jim's undoing the torque tube right now, which consists of taking that bolt out that holds the wishbones to the bottom of the torque tube. And then there's these six bolts at the rear end side. Take these six bolts out and then that tube should separate and slide forward, exposing the drive shaft. While he's doing that, we can get the rest of the transmission out. We've got one mount there, one mount there. 
And then our bell housing bolts along here and our little clutch linkage, which is behind this wiring harness here. Actually, I think that's the e-brake cable. And then we can get this out. Uh, for everyone that watched the when I rebuilt the transmission in my 47 Ford, it's kind of the exact same thing. There we go. All the way. So there's these two little pins right here, one there and one there. If we knock this pin off, then this collar will slide off and the drive shaft will come off. All right, Jim's got our drive shaft off. So for the rear end, right now we're just waiting on the package to arrive with the parts for that. I've got the transmission out, the stock one. So now we can start, we're gonna have to start cutting all this stuff out to make the T5 fit in here because it's considerably longer. Jim's prepping it right now. He's taking the S10 bell housing off and getting ready to put the flathead adapter bell housing on. This is all put together now. I'll give you a quick rundown on how it works. So here's a stock S10 bell housing. You take this off, you throw it away, put it in the scrap pile. Once it's unbolted, you take these little ears that used to have these bolts in them and you get a half inch drill bit and drill those holes out so that a half inch bolt will fit through there. Once you get a half inch bolt through there, then you can bolt this bell housing on. This bell housing bolts right up to the back of the flathead and makes it fit. Inside, what we had to do was Jim took this shaft and clutch fork out of the original transmission. There's another one laying down here so you can see how it used to go through there and it comes out on this side over here. So you take that out and then you put it back in the new bell housing, the new Speedway bell housing. There's a little roll pin in here that you have to push in and out to get this to, this little fork here to come off. The kit comes with a new release bearing and a spring. Jim drilled and can you see in there? It might be a bit weird. He drilled and tapped a hole there, threaded a quarter inch bolt in, and then just simply drilled a hole through the top of the bolt after cutting the bolt head off. And that is how this spring attaches. There's a little sleeve that slides over the input shaft area, which makes it the right size for the release bearing. And then there's another little shaft, which we haven't put on yet, it goes over here that adapts this end to fit in the pilot bearing. The pilot bearing is what Jim is currently working on right now. Slide hammering it out. Yeah. Not going so well. No, it's not going so well, but he'll get it out. He always does. So I know you can fill it full of grease, but in my experience, Filling it full of grease, I think, is only, I've only made that work once. There's the filling it full of bread trick, I know about that, but I don't have any bread. Who has bread? In this economy, you know how expensive bread is these days? So, the slide hammer, it works. That's how we got Shannon's out, that's how we just did a Muncie conversion on a, on a Chevy pickup a couple months ago, that's how we got that one out, so he'll get it out. Once that comes out, oh, here we go, right here. This new bearing goes in and it is the correct size to fit in the flywheel. And then here's the little sleeve that fits in the bearing and fits over top of this shaft. Once we've got that done, 
the transmission in theory should bolt to the back of the engine. However, we still have to get the, the center of that X member out. So once the clutch is done, we'll do, oh, oh, speaking of the clutch, we had to get a different clutch disc. This is a 14 spline disc that will fit on there like that. Actually, it goes this way. And that's all we gotta do. You still use the flathead pressure plate. You just need this disc here and easy peasy. Bob's your uncle. Actually, Bob was my dad. Old pilot bearing is out and the new pilot bearing is in. Jim just put the clutch in with a little lineup shaft tool. Pressure plate goes on next and then you can pull that tool out. So Jim's underneath taking that X member out. Probably the worst part of this whole job. So everybody give Jim a moment to appreciate his hard work under there. Here is the open drive conversion kit. This is from Hot Rod Works. This is first time I've ever dealt with Hot Rod Works. It's not a sponsored thing or anything. I paid full price for this. They don't know I'm doing a YouTube video on it or anything. But I've heard really good things about it. So there's three different parts of this kit. Part one is the, the open drive part. So you guys remember when Jim took that dowel pin out and slid that collar off and the whole drive shaft came off of the rear end? Well, here's what Hot Rod Works has made. This is a little splined yoke that slides on that spline shaft that is coming out of the, the pinion on the rear end. There's another pin that goes through into the hole that's in there. And then it's got two little set screws that go in each end to hold that pin in there. These get locked tighted in. Before that goes on, they have a new flange. I guess you would call it a flange. It comes with a gasket and it comes with a pinion seal. So this basically seals the end of the rear end up so that the oil no longer comes out. Note, it does have a little drain in here. This goes to the bottom and in the rear end, there's a little hole so that the oil that gets up in here runs down there and drains back into the rear end. This comes with all the hardware to bolt it on. And it also comes with a little vent tube. We're gonna have to drill and tap one of the axle tubes to accept a vent. So that's part one of the kit. Oh, and it comes with uh, U-bolts as well. And this takes a 1350 U-joint, which seems excessive because I'm pretty sure that a Banjo rear end will definitely explode way before a 1350 U-joint would. But that's what it comes with, so that's what we'll use. That's part one. Part two, we have this piece here. This is a separate part, different part number. You gotta order this separate if you were to buy this. So the torque tube, the long tube that Jim took off that exposed the drive shaft, that's where the wishbone's originally mounted. Because that tube is no longer there, it's gonna get replaced with a drive shaft. There's nowhere to mount the wishbones. That's where this comes in. This piece bolts to the X member in the frame and then the wishbones will mount to here. And that gives them a spot where they can attach to and pivot. However, wishbones are not designed to completely hold a rear end in. That's what the torque tube mainly does. The wishbones are kind of, they're more like trailing arms. They just kind of stop it from moving around. So they can't, when you take the torque tube out and replace it with a drive shaft, the wishbones can't really support the stress of acceleration and deceleration. Some particular wishbones can, like 35, 36 Ford wishbones. I've never heard of anybody having problems with just using those, but the 37, the 40 ones, they recommend adding a torque arm. Which brings us to part three of this kit. This is the torque arm. And this is basically a long bar, threaded on both ends. This end here, this bolts to the pinion, or the, the center section on the rear end. And this end here welds to the front of the wishbone. And this basically triangulates it and kind of makes it, you know, similar to a ladder bar. And it just, it takes the, 
adds a little bit of strength now that the torque tube's gone and makes it so that when you, you know, if you dump the clutch and the rear end goes like that, it's not gonna bend those, those wishbones. And same thing, if you hammer on the brakes really hard and the rear end locks up, it's not gonna force those wishbones to go down. So this is, this stuff here, you know, probably pretty easy to make, but for the price that Hot Rod Works sells it for, it's not worth trying to make. This takes a little bit of machining skills to figure out. Probably not something for the hobbyist to do, but once again, it is so affordable that, you know, why would you even bother? So I'm gonna pull the rear end out over here where it's easy to work on, and we'll start putting this all together. Well, Jim's got this all dissected. He did a really nice job cleaning it out. Unfortunately, we got a bit of rust damage on the frame. So we might have to call John and see how carried away he wants us to get with that. There is a, like we're probably gonna be making a plate that bolts in here, which will really stiffen it all up and strengthen it up a lot. So we might be able to get away with just making a little patch in here or here. Depends what John says. Um, also, I think we're going to have to relocate our front jack stands from the axle to the frame or something just to get... I want these wishbones to drop down out of the way. And then uh, I think we might be ready to... If we get these wishbones out of the way, see if that transmission will fit in there. So before we get too worried about making repairs on that X member, I wanna see how this fits in there. I don't think we need to whittle any of the X member away, but you know, let's find out. Let's put this in and see how it fits and then we can make an assessment from what we have to do after that. So this fits in here pretty good actually. The shifter went through the hole without having the, to cut a bigger hole. You can't see anything from under here, but, but yeah, we're not bad. So everybody that I've seen on the internet splits the wishbones, but I don't know if we need to. I just went and bolted up this piece. This is left over from the, the piece that Jim cut out. And that shows us where our wishbones used to mount. And I think we can probably get them pretty close to back there again if we cut this off. This serves no purpose for what we're doing. I don't know what it's all about, but we don't need it. We can cut that off. If we can cut that off, we might be able to get these up high enough that they'll mount in their original location. And if not, we can always drop them down a little bit. It'll give it a little bit more caster, but a little bit more caster never hurt anybody. I personally like a lot of caster in my vehicles because the more caster you have, the more stable it feels at higher speeds. And with this overdrive that John's gonna have, he's gonna be hitting all the high speeds. So we'll get a little bit of caster isn't gonna hurt him at all. I think I'm gonna do, uh, grab an air saw or something and zip this off and then push that up and see how it fits. In the meantime, Jim is out back putting the rear suspension back underneath the truck. We still have to put the torque arm on, but the torque arm 
we need the drive shaft in first to make sure that our torque arm is not going to interfere with our drive shaft at all. Look at this ingenuity. Wow. <laughs> so yeah, the, the torque arm will kind of be the last thing that we do. But for now, we'll get it up in there and then we can get these guys mounted again wherever they got to go. Okay, I've got this tab, little thing cut off and our wishbones are now back up in place and I can still get my fingers through here. So I'm confident that that is going to be just fine. Obviously we can't use this piece anymore because it's just completely deteriorated to nothing. But, you know, at least we can build a new one and know that if our wishbones are mounted in our stock spot, it's gonna work fine. So Jim made this really nice cardboard template of the, the section of the X member that needs the rust repair. So the cool thing with this is I can take this and scan it and put it on the computer and then trace it so that we can make a file and cut it out. Got that vice grip in place and it fits pretty good. So we'll make some marks and cut the damaged section out and then weld this piece in. Okay, both sides of this X member are repaired now. It's eighth inch plate shaped and welded in. The reason I went across here and down here is just because it's it's less cutting than if I went up like that. Um, also have this piece bolted in now. Jim drilled these holes the other day, so I had it unbolted so I could weld these in. But uh, now that they're done, we can bolt this up. So I think all that's left for fabrication under here is we got to do a transmission cross member and a wishbone mount. So this is the stock T5 transmission rubber, and I've just made a little cardboard template here. There is enough room that we can have the stud come through and still mount our wishbones. So that's really cool, because that means we don't have to split the wishbones. Uh, we're gonna cut this out on the plasma table, and then we can start mounting it. got this mocked up in here so we still need to go up like another I don't know three eighths of an inch or so what do we got 0.4 we'll call that three eighths that's close enough to three eighths so I think we're gonna make a little spacer that will weld onto here just to take up that slack originally I was thinking this would work perfect if you put this on the inside like this but then I started looking at it and I was like there's no way you would ever get it like you wouldn't be able to get it in there because it's going to hit this stud so we'll go this way and put a spacer I've got a spacer on there now so let's go fit this maybe drill the holes and mount it to the X member and then we can work on the wishbones yeah that worked out pretty well happy with that so I'll just run some drill bit through here Put some four bolts in, and I think uh, we're good. Got four holes drilled in there, thanks to that amazing $9 Princess Auto step bit. Some 7 16 bolts to match this one. So now we can build our wishbone mount. Originally, I was going to use the existing, or like the original wishbone mount, and weld it in, but it is rotted out and just, you know, not a very nice piece anymore. So we've got a plan B somewhere. I lost it, hold on. My friend Gord Betts makes these and these are like 
little wishbone ball mounts. He casts these out of aluminum. He's, he's a foundry guy. So he makes those up and I have one here. So it's gonna work perfect. We will mount that to the bottom of the plate that we just made. The wishbone will sit in there. And then our factory wishbone cup will just mount kind of like that. And I think it should work just fine. So that spacer just goes in there. This bolt goes through. And then our cup goes on the bottom. And there you have it, folks. A T5 mount without splitting the wishbones. Who says you gotta split the wishbones? Not me. I guess that can come out and get painted now. Jim is over here doodling. Cutting uh, the new hole for the shifter. So it's a little bit further back, but it's still in the original transmission cover area. So that's nice. Jim's got this all finished up. New hole cut, old hole patched up. He shaped a piece on the plenishing hammer and then welded it in. So, blast a little bit of undercoating on there and it can go in. Easy liner or rubberized? Easy liner. We're all painted and installed. Transmission mount and wishbone mount. Done, moving along. So I've got our brakes plumbed back in. I've got our emergency brake hooked up again. And now I'm gonna measure the drive shaft. This is a 27 spline slip yoke. Uh, basically, you push that in till it bottoms out. And then I moved it out three quarters of an inch. From there, I'm going to measure from the center of this U-joint hole to the center of, let me get my light here, the center of this U-joint hole. And then you give that measurement to the drive shaft shop. So it was 46 inches. So I'm gonna tell them that it's 46 inches and that end there takes a 1310 U-joint. And this end takes a 1350. I don't know why this is so big, but yeah, 1350 is huge. So for this end, I've got a 1350 a 1310 conversion joint meaning this side is 1350 and this side is 1310 so our drive shaft we can just get 1310 end yokes put on both sides and it should work great well jim got a little ahead of my filming here and he's got that transmission tunnel painted and installed and the carpet back in he cut a new hole here and managed to take the the carpet that used to be here and patch the current hole it's a little bit visible, but I mean, what do you expect when you're filling a hole in this carpet? Who knows how old this is? Probably before I was ever born. So next we're going to figure the shifter out. John wants to reuse this shifter if possible, which I think is a great idea because it's chrome and looks cool. So we can make that happen, I think. So here's the chrome shifter off the original transmission. And I think rather than worrying about getting it in the right spot right now, I'm just going to weld these guys together. I'll take the shifter off, put it on the bench, cut it off, cut this off, weld them together. We'll get it in there. And then once it's in there, we can warm this up with the torch and move it wherever is the most comfortable. And then Jim can sew up a shifter boot cover. So the top of the S10 shifter is cut off and the, the little neck part of the swan shifter is cut off so we can weld them together like that. Notice how I beveled this whole piece in here because it was, uh, I don't know, probably about a half inch thick. And that way we can get a nice deep weld on there so that it doesn't break off when John is slamming through the gears. So we can 
weld this up now. Well, the first test, like I thought, we got to go a little bit. We got to bend it forward a bit to clear the seat. So if we uh, didn't have the carpet in already, I'd just bring the torch over here and heat it up in the truck. But we got a little ahead of ourselves with the carpet. So that's no big deal. We'll just pop these bolts out and we'll take it over to the bench and heat and bend it on the bench and then try it again. Well, it clears the seat now, but I want to sit in it and try it and see if it's comfortable because there's more room for it to go ahead, but I don't know if we need to. It's first gear, second, yeah, I might go a little more. My elbow kind of hits, but it's, I mean, it's not bad. I could probably live with it, but we're already in here. Yeah, we'll go ahead a little bit more. All right, round two, bent it a little more. Let's give it a try. First gear, second gear. I think this is good. All right. Um, Jim is currently working on a shifter boot ring. We cut one out on the plasma table and he is over there polishing it on a little aluminum polisher. And I think we're almost done. Waiting for the drive shaft, and uh, once the drive shaft comes in, we can weld that torque arm to the wishbone. I'm waiting for, I want the drive shaft in first so that I don't put it in the way. But, uh, and then I think we're done. So while we wait for a drive shaft, we got a package that just got dropped off by the nice lady at Canada Post. So let's open it up. It's from uh, El Gordo Pinstriping in St. Albert, Alberta. Gord and Melanie are good friends of ours. They've been supporters of LG Speed and Custom since the beginning. I think I met Gord in 2008. He's got a little Acadian that he brought over to the shop and we custom built some lowering blocks for it. Let's see what he sent. Wow, Rock Auto Parts. Cool. I'm assuming it's probably just the box. How do we get into this thing? Who packaged this thing? Where's the beginning? Another box. Some bubble wrap. Lee, Shannon, Doris, and Baby Lux. So for regular viewers of this channel, you'll know that Shannon and I had a baby on the way and it came. Lux. Eldridge Grant, named after punk rock legend Lux Interior of the Cramps. There is, for good luck, $3.40. Wishing you happiness for a baby boy. We are very excited for you all. Looking forward to meeting Lux one day. Gord, Melanie, and Jason. Cool.
What do we got here? Oh, super cool. A little piggy bank for Lux that, <laughs> that's so awesome. So Gord is a pinstriper, El Gordo pinstriping. This is amazing. I don't even know what to say. Thanks so much, you guys. This is fantastic. I love it. I hope that Lux loves it too. And I, this makes sense now, so thanks. All right, drive shaft time. Yeah, check that out. Look at this. Whoa, a chrome pig. A chrome pig. That's awesome. What kid doesn't want a chrome pig? And it came with some... Uh... Starter fun. Yeah. Nice. I'll let Lux put that in. Oh, there's a penny in here too, an American penny. You know, in Canada, we get American change mixed in all the time, and nobody cares. But if I go to Washington, try to pay for my Big Mac with a Canadian quarter, man, it's like I just committed like a federal like offense. Well, we finally got our drive shaft back. That took two weeks, one week to build it, and then another week to build it again to the proper dimensions. There's a communication error somewhere at the shop that built the drive shaft. So in the meantime, we've had to move on to other projects as you can see. So John's truck has been sitting outside. So we're just gonna finish it outside because all it needs is the drive shaft put back in and that torque arm welded on so that's what we're gonna do right now drive shafts in just finished welding this torque arm tab on so once it cools down we can tighten up the bolt tighten up that jam nut and then I think it's test drive time all right it's moving test drive went almost great. The wishbones are, are touching here, so we might have to space this down a little bit lower and maybe shave a little bit of the transmission there. I thought uh, I could get away with not splitting the wishbones, but maybe there's a reason everybody splits the wishbones. I think we can still make this work though. So Jim shaved this down a little bit while he was doing that. I made a half inch spacer in there and I can fit my whole hand around here now. Let's try that, I guess. Hey, we're on test drive number two. I think we got it. We went over some good bumps. We went over the big speed bump at the shop. It's fine. Stop before we hit this pedestrian. What more do you want? You know, as much as I like my Ford three speeds, every time I put a T5 in a car, I'm like, oh yeah. That's why everybody does that. So comfortable to drive. I think we can call this a win. Big bump. 
fine. This chip bounces around. Well, there you have it. That's how we put a S10 five-speed in a 1941 truck. Five-speed behind the original flathead V8. Took the original 41 Ford rear end, converted it to open drive, made a drive shaft, uh, made transmission mounts, made it work with the stock wishbones, which you know was a little bit of a learning curve on that, but we figured it out and made it work without having to split them. So, you know, I prefer to do it that way wishbones when they're unsplit the uh, suspension geometry on them actually like when you split a wishbone the geometry on paper doesn't work anymore because they'll bind as you're going over bumps whereas if you can keep them together they can pivot and be happy in the real world it doesn't really matter there's enough flex in them that it's fine anyways but I mean if you can do it without splitting them why not it just makes it a little bit easier so yeah this uh, project worked out very well, hopefully John enjoys it. So that's five speed, man, it's such a difference between like on a, on a regular three speed, when you're out on the highway, it's fine. You just put it in third gear and away you go. But in town, it feels like there's, you know, the speed limits in town, it's always when you're in second gear, it's revving too high. When you're in third gear, it's lugging. There's the non-synchro into first gear. So there's that issue as well on the five speeds. They just change all of that. You can go right in the first gear, no problem. You've got, you know, that gap between second and third on a three speed, there's a gear there that you know just makes it really nice, really nice and drivable. Highly recommend it. So, anyways, that's the end of this video. Thanks so much for watching. As always, please check out the website lgspeedcustom.com if you want to get some LG Speed and Custom merch and support this channel. And yeah, we'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching. <music>